joined by Sienna head coach Jimmy Patsos and senior guard Marquise Wright. Coach of the Municipal League State. Sorry, I apologize. I didn't know you guys were waiting for me. Pimos, next time you're allowed to knock on the door. See, our team needs to communicate better, and so does our media staff. Um, a really good game, you know. We just we, 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 we clearly fell behind early, and we were just into foul trouble. And they were foul. There was none of that coming on. It was, it was, we just didn't handle it well. I thought guys were a little out of sorts. And uh, a lot of little things we didn't do. But, you know, I know Cremo's a good player. I told him how, fun, how much fun I – well, he's creative. He's like, a, he's like a throwback guy, you know, those hip hooks and stuff. But Nichols has clearly worked on his game. And I explained to some of my young players who get to play that he didn't get to play. And he has clearly taken that, channeled that energy of not playing, along with the knowledge that he gained from Singletary, who we know from Baltimore, Sanders, and Cream and, and Uli, and turned that into a great player. Like that guy kicked our butts, and you can't, you gotta, you gotta take it where you get it. He was a difference, I thought. You know, the bigs, we, we were a little sluggish early, but we fought back, and there was a couple times we could have got stops, and then we just we're gonna keep shooting threes, and that's on me as a coach. I thought some of our looks were good. I thought some of our looks we shouldn't have taken. We have some soul searching to do, and I wanted to play good teams to learn from it. Albany's a good program, but like that guy Nichols worked harder than our guys this summer. From what I saw today, channeling his energy combined with his knowledge, his skill set, he's a really, really good player. He's, he's tougher and better than I thought, and he beat us tonight, you know, because I knew Marquise was going to do his thing and JV was going to do his. And, and I know Primo is going to give you his, but that kid was, was better than our guards, and we have to learn from that. I'll take any questions. In the first was, he, was he better than you did think coming into this? Yes, I believe that's what my whole four minutes was just about. Yeah. Could you expand it a little no, bit? No, I'm just book? kidding. I'm take it easy over there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, did. I, I mean, I knew he was good. I knew he played. Like, I watched tape, and I know he's good. He just was, until you see someone in person, you know, he just, he was quicker and more powerful than I thought. He made good pull-ups, and he just, he was just tough, you know. He made some threes, but like, I know he didn't play. And I read the article on him about how you know how hard he works and comes in in the morning and stuff. But like, I thought we'd match him, you know. I thought Khalil and Kadeem could match him. He outplayed them, you know. Marquise did his thing. He had some foul trouble early. That's okay. You know, Nico turned it on late. I was really disappointed in his first half performance because when you're down 18, it did that. You know, that that's and I'm not mad. At, I'm not mad at anybody. It's a good game. We learned a lot. But they did some. Moves. That guy was better than that. That guy. That guy was the X factor. You know, that was the second baseman from the Mets two years ago, whatever his name is, was plays. Nationals. That that guy is that fair, Tim? That guy with the second baseman who kicked butt for the Mets did Murphy. I didn't I didn't know who his name was until the playoffs. Well, I, I knew who Nichols' name was, but I didn't know he was that good until I watched him up close. So I compare him to him. And he's doing pretty good. What do you think the atmosphere of the Jimmy is did it help them uh, tonight? Yeah, it was a, yeah, we play in atmosphere. It was good. It was good. It was good atmosphere. It was, everything was fine. There was nothing. Everything was there fine. We, just, we didn't play that well early, but the atmosphere was, you know, was good. You went away from the three pointer in the second half a lot. I mean, what was kind of thinking behind that? Because we were down eighteen. Well, I mean, so threes so what, are worth more than twos. No, you went away from it in the second half. It seemed like attacking the basket more. We were, but we made a lot of threes because we didn't make any in the first half. No, no, no. We were, we, 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 we drove. We wanted to drive and kick, which was our yeah. initial game plan. You know, there was a lot of nerves out there. You know, I thought we had. I'll be honest. We had some good looks in the first half that didn't go down. You know, we had, we make a couple of those, but at the end when we were down like ten. Seriously, yeah. I thought Nico made a couple of big threes, and then at the I wanted that. It's funny. I wanted to attack. I wanted to run that play for Javier. We were down six. We wanted to go inside, see if we get in one, and set the press up. And Nico's feeling it. You know, Nico's a field guy. He's he's. I have to adapt to coaching guys like Nico Claire. They're, they're energy guys. They take some interesting shots. Say it's 2016. Um, you have to have those guys on your team to win the MAC. And I'm learning. Now, he was off. He's had a bad knee and all that. But he tries. You know, he's, he, nobody wants to win more than him. I thought in the first half his missed layup dunk was a big play. And I don't think he did anything intentional. But we were going to cut it to two, and now it's four. And somebody's mad. It doesn't run back. we got to grow up a little on our program. I'll be honest about that. We gotta grow up a little bit in that program. We make a bad play, there's a call that we don't think goes our way, and I thought the calls were fine. I, it's all fine. And I really like those guys. Brian Dorsey's a really good ref, ACC ref. Okay, go on to the next play. But I'm um, dealing with 18 to 22 year olds. You want to continue? Go ahead. And what, what what happened with that technical foul, and what kind of happened there, and, and what was your reaction to it? I asked him if I could get a technical for what I was thinking. He said, "I think you stink." <laughs> Oh, it's old Jim Balbano line. I just said I wanted the technical. I said, I didn't think Brett's was a charge. Look, yeah. 
I think that I think that there should be some leeway in the game. I'm really on board with the rule changes. I love my kids. The head of officials was here. They are talking about very. You almost can't take a charge. Our senior player Brett Bisping drives and charges to get his fourth foul. It's a big play in the game. We got out ahead of three. I want to set the defense up. I said, Brian, you're not supposed to. I did, I did not curse him. My boss is here. I was, and I was upset. I said, we're not supposed to call charges in there. I turned around. I took two steps, and I got a tight. Now, if there was like a bad word slipped in there, my subconscious mind may have put that in there. And I might not know. But the rule is, is you can't take a charge in there. And our guy got a charge called on him in that circle that they painted like six of them in there. And they have 25 meetings a year on it. Said, I'm allowed to disagree with the call. The referee, Brian Dorsey's good. Andrew Maris really good. Guy Pagano and I known each other for 25 years. They're all really good refs. But we got fired up from it, so it's okay. I, 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 didn't, I didn't think it would cost the game, but I was just pointing. I pointed and said, you're not supposed to have charge calls. And, they, and it was on Brett. It was his fourth call. You know, I'm going to stick up for Brett. So Nico, a lot of what Nico goes and kind of ties in with this, he thrives on emotion in the game. But sometimes the motion gets the best of them. So how do you balance that? How do you I don't know, he's 19. So how do you balance that as a coach? I'm working on it. Got any suggestions? <laughs> Got nothing. I'd help me. I'd be happy to try it. Ask Javion. I put Javion's play and he gave me a suggestion. It worked. Here's, here's a funny thing about our team. Javion gave me a play he picked up the other day in the pros. We scored twice running it perfectly. The third time we didn't run it. Guy didn't run the play. Said, oh, I thought I have to deal with that. 2016, to answer your balance question, Mark. We ran the play, it worked perfectly. We ran the play, it worked perfectly. We went to run the play again, and I think Tim was sitting right there, and I looked over. I said, why didn't you guys just run the play? Well, I thought, and then, you know, and I was going to do, uh, I have to, I have to, de I'm, de I'm, I'm being more patient. I'm learning to get it. It's the first time our team's played together, and that's on me as a coach. I have to accept that. On the other hand, I'm not going to turn my back on these young men when they make when they make mistakes. And I think my boss is great. He's very understanding. We, we talk to them. That's on us for not having our players together for five games. That is, those are the facts, man. And that hurt us. And I thought all of a sudden, Vaughn, who I thought in his third game, he had a st struggle in the first half. And, you know, Nico's coming back. You know, it's an emotional game to come back in. My thing is, Mark, do you take him out and, and be mad at him for being emotional? In other words, I'm, I'm working on it. I thought in the second half he was emotional, but it was in you know, control. I know one thing, missing three games did not help his performance tonight. Us playing our team together for the first time against one of the better mid-major programs in the country, three NCAAs, postseason, tough place to play, all the hype. I liked it all. That's on us. But I'm not going to give up on our kids and kick them off the team because they made one mistake. <clears throat> and I think John Dargenio, and I don't speak for him, is an unbelievable leader who helped us get, he was the catalyst for this game. I mean, I was started with the same come the game, come over here. John deserves a lot of credit for saying the series isn't going to end. I'll work out some stuff. The other hand, when, when, when guys mess up, I ask the boss what he thinks, and he says, this is the rules, and this is what you should do, and I thank him for that. We missed three games, two guys, and it cost us. And, and 18 to 22-year-olds don't think it's going to cost them, but it cost us today. That nickel's being unbelievable. Questions from Marquise? Marquise, what do you think? Why did the team struggle in the first half the way it did? Um, we just we didn't come out with intensity from the beginning. Um, a lot of little foul calls, but we just got to adjust to that. He said that on me. How do you feel about the fishing? I mean, no problem with it. We just got to adjust as a team. Marquise, how tough is it to get down to a team as good as that? I mean, by double digits, you guys obviously fought back, but it's not easy to come back and win in a place like this. We got to stop doing it. Um, we got to come out from the beginning and be ready to play. We wasn't ready to play as a team in the beginning, and it fought us. I mean, we fought hard in, in the second half, but it just wasn't enough. They were the better team than that. Coach, um, the result of the game aside, how would uh, – how would you say playing in stuff you compared to your expectations, and would you be open to coming back here? In the I would not have to go now. John Argenio and myself have the appointment, so we will be happy to talk to you guys next. For all the latest news on your Saints, follow us on social media and visit us at SiennaSaints.com.